Hello and welcome to Ignite with Mwangala with me Mwangala Chakalashi Santos. Now today we're talking music. I know a lot of us listen to different kinds of music and the question we must be asking ourselves is what does music do for you? Joining me in the studio today is a gentleman known as Vision and he will be talking about his musical life and obviously his professional life. Vision, welcome to Ignite. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so glad to have you on Ignite. Yeah, thank you very much for your invite. I was uh, watching some of the videos that you have done and I'm saying this is top of the range well, music. I would say thank you to that. Mm. I have a team that know what they're doing. Ah. They, they're a bit costly, but they know what they're doing. Okay. And your uh, saying that is proof. Oh, wow. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> now, before we talk about music, and I guess that's why you strike me. I mean, you are not in music full time. You are working. I'm in music full time and part time. I like that. So, what do you mean your music full time and part time? Well, it's something that I intend to do for a while, uh -huh. but then it's not my source of living. Okay. I don't. I don't do music for a living. So. Uh -huh. That's why I'm in music full time, mm -hmm. but I also have other things that I do full time. I like the way you say it in a bossy way. I, I don't do music full time. It's, that's not where I'm getting my bread and butter from. <laughs> <laughs> but here you are doing very good music. It's tough. Now, is it? To survive on music, it's tough. Let's talk about some of the challenges that you're faced in music. Some of the challenges. Uh, we have a lot of good people in the Zambian music industry, mm -hmm. but we also have a a few, but not very few, mm. people that are a bit selfish. There's people that will refuse to jump on your song because they feel it's good. Mm -hmm. So they're not, okay, this song sounds really nice. If I jump on it, I'm just going to shoot it to the top. Yeah. So they'll, they'll rather not jump on the song. Instead of giving you a simple no, mm. a no is a, is, it's a response, it's an yeah. acceptable response. Yeah. They'll just choose to stop picking your calls, stop responding to your messages, uh, and they just keep quiet. And, that's and then it. you eventually just look for somebody else. And that's the reality you live with? That's the reality we live with. Okay. Now, what, what, who is uh, Vision, before we get uh, in, in the details well, vision. of your career? My biological names are Stephen Kings Mushai. Uh -huh. I'm not going to say my age. <laughs> <laughs> I thought men easily say their age. No. I thought that was for women. No, 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 no. no. I'm not going to say my age. But yeah, okay. my names are Stephen Kings Mushai, married, mm -hmm. seven children. I like the way you say married. Are you not? Oh, very proud. Of course. Okay. Happily married. We just wanted to make sure. Seven children, six girls, one boy. Uh -huh. I have a full-time job. Mm. I'm a business person. I'm a network marketer. Okay. I do music. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you do a whole lot of My things. days are like crazy, mm -hmm. but I manage. Great. Now, who inspired you to go into music? Well, inspiration, I wouldn't say inspiration came from a specific source, mm -hmm. because music is a passion. Mm -hmm. So when you sit on it, or when you choose not to do it, when it's inside you, mm -hmm. you kill or rather suppress a certain side of yourself. Mm. which means whatever you are doing doesn't is make not sense. it doesn't really show who you really are because you are suppressing a certain side of yourself wow. so music is like a passion it burns it it burns inside you so if you don't let it out mm -hmm. usually you, you find that you you find yourself grumpy you find yourself angry for no reason so it's a way of letting some of our stress some of our emotions mm -hmm. some of our deeper pains out. Oh. But coming to inspiration, mm. I've always followed people like Mac 2, Slab D, Exile. Exile, I follow him, okay, now he's called Israel. I follow him because of his ability to work with his voice. When Exile mm. sings, you can tell to say, okay, somebody there is singing. Mm -hmm. Because of that, I know I can learn a few things from him. And then from these other two guys, they've just shown me that hard work pays. Hmm. So if you look at their work for the past 10, 12 years and today, you can tell to say, wow, this is a f total transformation. Whoa, I like what you said. It was so profound. I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, wow, there's something he knows that a <laughs> lot of people out there don't know. I looked down. You said <laughs> music 
is engraved in you inside yeah, it's a, of you. It's a fire. It's something that is inside of you, and yes. if you don't let it out, it actually kills you. It kills you from inside, yeah. and then you're no good to the people around you mm. because a part of you is not living. Who that is so profound, Vision. <laughs> now, how did you know? that there was something, there was another side of you that was inside of you and that was through music? Well, I think I've known from the time I was 10. Mm -hmm. I used to sing in the choir, like a lot of other people that sing. Uh -huh. I church. was actually a music director at church. Yeah. Then in 2008, 2004, I finished my grade 12, did my college, 2008 started working for Capital Buses. Mm -hmm. People know it as Flash. Flash, yes. I couldn't go to church anymore because I used to go to a church that worships on Saturday. Mm -hmm. But I was employed for the sole reason that they needed somebody to be in the office on Saturday. So I couldn't, mm. which means I had to stop going to church. I had to stop training the choir or mm -hmm. directing the choir and stuff. That's how I stopped music. Mm -hmm. And let's see, almost 10 years later, yeah, 10 years later. A side of you was still calling you to A side of me. Or... I literally forgot about music, but I could sing in the shower, yeah. sing along to my songs, when I'm, to some songs when I'm playing them in the, in the car and stuff, until 2018. So I decided, okay, I'm broke. What am I going to do for my wife's birthday this year? So I called someone and said, you know what? Write me a birthday song, mm -hmm. but I'm going to come and sing it myself in the studio. He says, ah, are you sure? I said, yeah. I'm going to come and sing it myself in the studio. So a week later, they sent me the sample, the demo. Two days later, I was in the studio recording. Then the guys went like, no way. You sing like this. And yeah. you said you haven't sung in 10 years. Mm -hmm. We are going to keep on doing this. So you better get your writing mode back because we will do this. And then two months down the line, we had like 12 songs done. So who writes your music you do? Some of them I write. Most of them are written by Kidman. He's my producer, and most of them, he's the one who writes. Okay. A very multi-talented person. Wow. That's, I know that there's something that music does to us, and I think in my intro I had talked about what music does for a lot of us. Yes. What does music do for people? For people? Mm -hmm. Music does a lot of things for people. Some of them it relieves their pain, mm -hmm. like me, when I'm feeling emotional. Mm -hmm. I have to find a studio and just go let it out. Uh, when I feel really emotional, like I just want to cry, mm -hmm. I do it while I'm in the booth singing, while I'm trying to sing and pray at the same time. Mm -hmm. Music expresses our inner things that we can't say, yeah. things that we can't talk about. Mm. You can talk about them in a song. So some of the music we sing is about dancing and all that, but music is much more than just dancing. Mm. It talks about the issues that people face the challenges that people are facing in their day-to-day -day life, in their married life, in their single life, in their work life, in their business life. Music addresses all those things. It speaks to you on a deeper level that no other person can actually just sit next to you and talk to you about it. Mm, that is so powerful. <laughs> for those of us that cannot sing, I mean, for you, you can sing in the shower, you can Oh, my own music doesn't speak to me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, and I don't know how. Oh, wow. How come? <laughs> but you still write it for people and people listen. I, and they I give express you what I feel through my songs. Okay. Yeah. So, so you do it for the benefit of people. Yes. Okay. okay. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's to let go of my own stress. Okay. I have a song called Down. Uh -huh. It's not yet out. It mm -hmm. talks about how, how, how busy or how hard my world is. I go to work, my boss will probably scream at me for some reason. Mm. My relatives will probably call me and say, There's Kulibe Unga Kuno, mm. give me a hundred kwacha, and then you tell well, them, I, I don't have. Mm -hmm. So when I get home, that's my heaven. That's where I should have peace. Yeah. So please, when I get home, even if you're not okay, that's now you're talking to your wife and say, yeah. Even if you're not okay, mm -hmm. just, just say it's gonna be fine. Smile. Because if I get in and I find you looking all gloomy, all sad, <laughs> then the whole world crashes. Of course. And that's a life for like almost every day, man. Yeah. Unless, of course, you're very wealthy, but even those have their own problems. Uh huh. So someone somewhere has to be the one to ignite that spark of smile in your life. Beautiful. Now, let's talk about how you strike a balance. You're working, you're just telling me that from eight to about 21. To about 21. 
Mm-hmm. And you still have to write music. You still have to record music. I still have to. You're a father, and I'm looking at you like a father of seven. Oh, I'm a husband before I'm a father. Okay. Those so you're a husband. Can, can hang then, for a bit. <laughs> and then you're a father <laughs> of seven beautiful, beautiful kids. Yeah. How do you strike a balance? Oh, it's not easy. Mm. My wife gets cross sometimes. She literally gets pissed and says, okay, is this vision or oh, this is my husband? <laughs> So it's yeah. not easy, but they're very supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, striking a balance. Mm-hmm. It's something that I can't say I have mastered, because mm-hmm. sometimes I find that work pulls me more, and then I ignore the other things, and then other times music pulls me more, mm-hmm. then my family suffers, and then they'll start complaining, and then I have to put music on hold for a bit. There's a time I told my manager, you know what, for the next one month, no music talk. At all. Do not call me. Mm-hmm. Do not tell me about anything to do with music because my family is complaining. My family is suffering. Mm-hmm. So I need to pay attention to their needs and see how I can help. So it's not really easy, but I can only do the best I can to see how I can manage both. Mm. And my you're business, doing My business, my network marketing, mm. my work, and the music. Mm. Okay. So I'm thinking seven kids. How long have you been married? Oh, just four years. Four years? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Seven. Six daughters. My oldest son is 16. My oldest daughter is turning 11. Your eldest daughter is? My oldest son. 16. 16. Mm-hmm. He's a big boy. He's the man of the house right now. Okay. Then my daughter Chelsea, she's 11. Mm-hmm. Caroline is 10. Mm-hmm. Now Gabriella is turning seven, Brenda is turning six, Mm -hmm. the twins just turned three, the day before yesterday. Mm. Actually yesterday, Mm -hmm. they turned three years old. Wow, okay. Where do you draw your strength from? (laughs) (laughs) There's only one place one can draw strength from, and that's God. Mm. God has my back in everything that I do. Okay. I may not pray every day, but I have my moments with him, and I know everything I am and everything I have comes from him. Ooh. That's where I get my strength. Second from that one, my wife, she's my rock. Mm. She's the one that pushes me to be the best version of myself that I can be. So yeah, everything I do, she goes to say, uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh, do not embarrass me. Oh, really? <laughs> wow, do you do the same for her? Well... I do the best I can. <laughs> I do the best I can. Okay. I have her back when she least expected. For okay. me, she has my back the whole time. You know how men are. Oh, yeah. She wants certain things done. I'll say, okay, I'll get to it. I mean, eventually. Mm-hmm. It could take a month. Yeah. She doesn't like that. But, but she's, for her, she's, she'll make sure that things yes. are done orderly. She makes sure vision when I'm going anywhere. She says, are you sure you look like vision? No, 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 no. You can't go out looking like that. Come here. Uh. Change this, change that. So she has my back and she always tells me, whatever happens in life, you got this. There's more in that head of yours than you ever imagine. Whoa. So she's my strength as well. Oh, beautiful. And you've been married for four years. Four years. And we have seven kids. Okay. I am just trying to, <laughs> to calculate this. It's a blended family. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> now, uh, before we take a break, yeah. um, I want to find out some of the lessons that you have drawn from your own life. Probably when we come back, you talk about some of the lessons that you've drawn from your own life. I have some sad stories that I've learned from. Okay, so we take a short break and when we come back, you tell us about that sad story. Sure, no problem. We take a short break and when we come back, we continue talking to Vision. Don't go away. To advertise on this program and enjoy amazing introductory rates, please call us on plus 260-211-290959 or plus 260-211-290912 or plus 260-953-538-000. Or send us an email at loyolazam at gmail.com.
Hello and welcome back. If you're joining us now, I am talking to Vision and he's just sharing his life story. Now, before we went on break, we've talked about your marriage life, we've talked about your career, we've talked about, we've talked about many other things, but you've just hinted to me that there is a sad story that you have. Mind sharing what that mm. story is? My childhood was quite tricky. Mm. It was hard. My father died, I think, when I was three. My mother never really remarried. She tried, but Didn't she lost that. her second husband again. Mm. So in the 90s, I used to live with my grandmother in Kapiri. Life was so hard that I remember one, one year we lived on mushrooms and mm. pumpkin leaves. The whole of rainy season, mm. waiting for the maize to actually be ready for harvest and be able to cook. Shima. Mm. That was one of the worst days of worst times of my life. But if I can get through that, I'm pretty sure I can get through anything. Mm. You know where you eat mushroom, the, the slimy ones? Mm -hmm. No salt. Literally mm. every day you wake up in the morning, you go look for those things. Mm. You go look for them and cook them without salt and eat them like that. How hard can that be? Yeah. And then I came into Lusaka, started school in grade four, because I was too old mm. to get into grade one. And I think I was always number last in my class mm. until somewhere grade six. Then I had a dream. I was reading the Bible. Um, what verse was that? I had a dream that I was reading the Bible. It should be Ezekiel chapter seven, verse seven. I think he talks about the end is near for Israel, this and that. From that day I could read. That's when I started reading. This is Jelita. She is mm. cooking fish in grade six. And I did my grade seven, went through grade eight, went grade nine, went through grade 12, got 11 points, and here I am. So my growing up wasn't easy, but I think if I can get through all that, there's nothing that can stop me. You're unstoppable. I mean, it's very clear from yeah. the music. It's, it wasn't easy. I actually get emotional talking about those days. Oh, yeah. And I think even my wife is learning about that from this interview. She doesn't know about it. I rarely mm. talk about it. Wow. It was tough. Okay, so what do you think are some of the lessons that you went through? I mean, that you're picking from, from what you went through as, as a young boy? Well, I, I, I learned that uh, whatever happens, if I am to die today, Someone in my family should take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't just leave them to with their mother, especially if their mother is struggling. Mm. Not that my mother wasn't available. She was available the best she could because she had five of us. Yeah. And me and my older brother had to live with grandma while she had to live with three others. So it wasn't easy. Mm. I think if someone or something happens that removes a mother, from the nuclear family, someone somewhere should step in and ensure those kids have a better life. Mm. It's by the grace of God that I actually went to school. Because if mom didn't come to pick me up way back in 1996, 1997, I would have been, I would have never gone to school. Yeah. And I would have never been seated here. I would have never been here. So all that happened because dad died and not a lot of people from his family thought to say, okay, uh, my brother is gone. Let me see how I can help these kids and stuff. It was just mom and her family. Mm. And even her, she was just one person who was trying the best she could to live her life, at the same time provide for her kids. But we turned out fine. Yes, so we thank you God did, for that. you did, of course. Yeah. Do you blame anyone for no, what you no, went no, no. through? No, there's a moment I used to think to say, okay, maybe if my father didn't die, maybe this and that would have never happened. Yeah. Maybe I wouldn't have made the mistakes I made, mm. whereby I was 25, I decided to get married, mm. start having children, put burdens on myself of paying bills when I could have been concentrating on building my life. So yeah. you think to say, if he was around, maybe yeah. I, would, I wouldn't have made these mistakes. Maybe you would have told me to say, don't do this. You're still too young. Don't do that. But I think I turned out fine. You did. You did. I turned out I mean, fine. Look at you. <laughs> now, uh, 
what are some of the lessons that you picked or rather what are you doing differently now that you know i mean that 25 is way too young oh 25 for, is definitely for, way for too young, young. To for marry. any girl to walk into my house and say i'm pregnant uh-huh. your son did this oh uh-huh. was that a case for you was no. it something that you planned no i didn't really plan it uh-huh. but i didn't know better hmm. All I can say is if I knew then, okay, I knew then. Yeah. I just didn't understand it the way I understand it now. Uh. It's like telling a boy who's 17 to say, stay away from girls. Yeah. Then he goes like, ah, the Bali also. Mm. He doesn't understand it the way we do. Yeah. But what I'm learning, what I've decided to do different is I have these conversations with my children every time, mm. especially my son. He's a quiet boy, so he rarely talks. So whenever we talk, I tell him to say, you know what, it's okay to be wrong. Yeah. Don't always want to be perfect, whereby if you're in class and the teacher asks and you're not sure of the answer and you, you don't raise your hand to answer, it's okay mm. to be wrong. Then other people will tell you. If you want to be perfect all the time, you will do things without asking anybody and then you'll find yourself in a bigger problem. Everything we do mm. is for you to have a better life. So never be afraid to ask when you don't know. Never be afraid to ask for what you want. If you don't have it, go to the person who has and say, hey, I'm asking for this, if you can share. And it's okay for them to say no as well. Mm. It's okay for them to say no. But if you keep saying, ah, I can't ask, I can't do this, I just want to do this, you end up, you'll find yourself in a ditch. And who knows, mm. I may not always be there. True. Which is true. I may yeah. not always be there. God can decide to take me tomorrow. Yeah. God can decide to take my, my wife, who's your mother, tomorrow. Mm. Then what? Exactly. So you see that uh, we all go through challenges in life for a reason. Look at look at you now. You are teaching, and, and really. I pray that a lot of young men are gonna watch this show. I hope so. So I'm can... not the I'm not the best. Of I'm, I've just learned from what mm. I've gone through. And you're paying it forward. I mean, yeah. through. And I pray that you you know from time to time, not only your kids, but you know you you give these talks to. Yeah, there's my to boy at the boys. office. My. My assistant at the office, I always tell him to say, do not, because he's always on his phone. Mm-hmm. I would mention his name, but yeah. He's always on his phone. I'm looking for him, he's on his phone. So I tell him, say, you see these girls you chat with, you are not ready for this. Between now and the time you're 30 is the time to build your life. Yeah. Do not burden yourself with bills. You're 22 because you get a five pin as a salary from somewhere. You want to settle. You want mm. to marry somebody's daughter. Mm. Yes, you can. But what happens to the 5 pin that you earn? It goes into rentals, it goes into, a year later it goes into diapers, it goes into, when you think, okay, I've stopped buying diapers, it goes into school fees for the child. Yeah. You do not have anything to actually build your life on. Mm. By the time you're thinking, okay, I need to lay a foundation, I need to start a business, your income doesn't allow you because the bills are there. Five years down the line, it's not just one school fees, it's two school fees because the, the, the yeah, child has like a young brother yeah. or young sister. Mm. That's it. The chances of you starting a business or doing anything for yourself are gone. Oops. So when is it the right time for men to marry? I'm no expert. I think a (laughs) guy should be at least 30 before they think of marrying. So 30, that's the time you think they're ready? I think 30. Because you finish your grade 12 at 21. Some some of them 20. Mm. Those who are lucky. 20. Others even 17, 18, they're done Mm. with grade 12. So you give yourself two, three years to five years of doing university, college, or whatever. Mm. Then you get a job, maybe at 25, you have a job. That five years is for you to put your life in order, Mm. for you to lay a foundation. The first two years you work, you have no responsibility, you're saving your money. Mm. But at the same time. Yes, after Mm. two years you think, okay, you you, you ask for advice from people, what can I do, I have this much. Um, I have a passion for cars, I have a passion for, for business, I have a passion for women's hair. What mm. can I do? They advise you, you start a business. You run it for three years. You get, you get shares into some big corporations. By the time you're 30, you're driving your own car, you're probably building your own house. Then you can think of marrying. Because even if you bring in those bills, you have an income that will sustain the bills, that will pay for the bills without putting pressure on yourself. Hmm. But when you have nothing, mm-hmm. it's just the same pay. You're just dividing it into 300 directions it doesn't add up. I'm not saying it's impossible. Yeah, but God it's... can smile at you and then at 45, there, boom, you have a deal, your, ch- your life changes. But chances are, slim. 
foundation is the is, is the best. I like that. I'm, I only learned that when I was above 30, but so I'm trying hey, to do what I can. Yeah. Now. And you're doing well. You are. By the grace of God. True. Now back to music. What oh, inspired yeah. oh, you? I'm to a musician. Write? Yes, oh. you are. I forgot. <laughs> Now let's talk about your music. Now that you remember that you're an artist, <laughs> what inspires you to write some of your music? Or is there a, any particular song you can say this one? I love it. You've talked about "Down," which is not yet out. Yeah, that one is not yet out. Uh -huh. Million Ways, for example. Mm -hmm. I was feeling so much in love when I was thinking of Million Ways. Not that I'm not in with love your right wife. now. <laughs> we, we have to make this very clear. In love with your wife. Yeah, okay. not that I'm not in love anymore. I am mm -hmm. in love, deeply in love. She's a gorgeous woman, mm -hmm. smart woman. She works hard. So I was thinking, this, okay, uh, what can we do different in these marriages, in these relationships that we have? So that's when I said, okay, how about loving somebody differently every day? Mm. You wake up one morning, you read. Everybody has their love languages. I bet you have your own. Mm. I have mine. Mine, for example... You can take care of me, pay attention to me when I'm talking, uh, do things the way I like. If I like eggs, do them the way I like them. Mm -hmm. That's my love language. Mm. So everybody has a love language. Others, it's acts of help. You wake up one morning, make breakfast for her. That shows you love her. Yeah. So instead of giving this love that you have, because everybody has so much love in them, Instead of distributing it to different people, you give this one your smile, you give this one your, your, your inner passion, which is music, you give this one your, your laughter, you give this one your drunken side. Why don't you combine all that and give it to one person, but differently? Mm. Be a different person with the same person every time you feel like you need to do something. Today, be the musician. Tomorrow, be this chef that can cook her breakfast. Mm. The other day, be this nanny, or is it nanny, mm -hmm. that can take care of the babies while she's studying for exams. That's loving the same person differently. Whoa. That's why we say million ways to love you instead million of loving ways million different people. to love people. you, and I know we're gonna play that. But before we play it, yeah. can you sing for us? Really? <laughs> you? In fact, before I even send you to to, to sing, <laughs> you're going to send the show into a song. If you're on your deathbed and you were given a second chance to live, what would you do differently? What would I do differently? Mm. I would go back to the time I was 20. Okay, that's a very difficult question. Because I would go back to the time when I was 20, and I would choose not to get married, but I wouldn't want my kids not to be, not to be in my life right now. Mm. So it's, it's a bit complicated. You get mm. I would go back to the time I was 20 years old, and just do things differently. Choose to be with the person that I was then, that I was with then, but ask them to wait till I was ready, lay a foundation for my life, lay a foundation for my family, so that five, ten years from the time I was 20, I have this big umbrella that mm -hmm. anybody can just come in and shield themselves from the sun, shield themselves from the rain, pick up a fruit from the floor and help themselves. That's what I want to become. I want to be this big umbrella that a new music artist that is born can say, ah, have you heard of Vision Legacy? Mm -hmm. They call me and I tell them, okay, here's a studio, do whatever you want to do, and here's a budget of this much, we'll push your music for the following three months, do what you can. And I don't want anything in return. This is just me helping you. Powerful. It was nice having you on Ignite with Mwangala. I was talking to Vision, who is a, an artist. He's going to sing for all of us on Ignite with Mwangala. And let us enjoy ourselves. This has been Mwangala Chakalashi Santos. Join me for yet another exciting episode on Ignite with Mwangala. Instead of having a million girls, I would rather love you a million ways. Kiss you a million times. You are one in a million, girl. Instead of giving me love to the other girls, me I would rather... Girl, na faka pa mozi vonse no pasa we o weka. Kod, ndi o zinga wame no sot. Na, kod, ungangale president no vote. Na, kod, 